Amen. What a day it's already been, huh? Good stuff. Hey, a great weekend so far, and I know we had the uh, Pro Rodeo this weekend, and some of you are with us today and, and uh, in town. It's good to have Mason with us today, and I uh, appreciate him opening us up in prayer this morning. It's good to see him. Uh, Tilden Hooper, I think, is with us today, and so it's glad to have him in our service. And we had our Mule Rodeo Saturday. And man, that was awesome, right? Sprayberry and him and his family's with us today, and so uh, that was the first of many to come, and so it's just been a, a wonderful weekend so far, and it's finally Sunday, amen? Hey, th- we've been in a series called Like Jesus, and uh, what we've been doing is going through the Ten Commandments, and just kind of, I-, I haven't really spoken a lot about Jesus uh, in-, in the New Testament, we've just kind of been going through uh, these commandments, and hopefully in your mind you're seeing how Jesus has fulfilled every single one of these so far. We've only been through three, and today we get to uh, the fourth commandment, which is about the Sabbath. And so today's message, I always try to maybe kind of uh, prelude you into what the message is going to be like. Uh, and so today, the message is going to be a, a, a really a teaching message. I'm just going to answer some questions today about what is the Sabbath and, wh- and what does it really mean. Because for, for many of us in our, um, in our lives... Uh, in the society that we li- live in, we try to get as much as we can out of life for most of us, or we're on the opposite end, end of the spectrum, and we just kind of exist. And so for the Sabbath, for us to understand it uh, as, a, as a people and as a church, uh, I'm just going to teach on it today, because for most of us, uh, we don't have a clue what this concept means. And, and so this is one of the commandments where Jesus actually, uh, not Jesus, but God, he sets it up. It is, uh, all of them are for our benefit, um, but many of them say, thou shalt not, or thou shalt, okay, if you got the King Jimmy version, but in Exodus chapter 20, uh, just starting in verse uh, 8 there, it it says it a little bit different. Uh, It says it like this, remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. A little bit different terminology there, where in the other ones it is, uh, you must, you have to do this, you will not do this. On the Sabbath, it's, now remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And let me just read through verse 10, it says, or verse 11, or actually 10. It says, you have six days each each day for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons, your daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, any foreigners living among you. And for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them, but on the seventh day he rested. And that's why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit of an illustration here. There was a pastor one time and a friend of his called him up, and he needed to meet with uh, the pastor. And they needed to, he needed to discuss some issues with him. He says, um, can, can I take you out to lunch? He says, sure, that'd be great. He says, well, what day are you available? He says, well, on Friday, I'm doing nothing. He goes, okay, well, that'd be perfect. He says, uh, we'll, we'll meet for lunch. How do you like this? He's not, well, well, hang on. He says, no, you don't understand. Friday, I'm doing nothing. He goes, yeah, you already told me that exactly. He says, what restaurant do you like? I'll, I'll take any, any restaurant you want to go to. He says, you, you make it, you pick it, and we'll go there. He's like, I, I can't do it on Friday. Well, why not? Because I told you I'm doing nothing. Well, uh, I, I explain, because if you're not doing nothing on Friday, that, that should mean that you're, no, you don't understand. Like, I am purposely doing nothing on Friday, so I can't, we got to pick another day. He says, that's my day off that's my sabbath day and so i i'm i'm not i can't go to meet with you because we'll be discussing church business or whatever else and so i can't go with you and so you know it's just kind of uh the actually the rest of that story was he says um well it's just one lunch hour you know what's what's the big deal and he goes why don't you just ask me to commit adultery because if god puts the Sabbath into the Ten Commandments, isn't it just as important to observe it as it is to not commit adultery? And he goes, I'm sorry, I guess you're doing nothing on Friday, you know? 
And so, you know, we kind of think about that in, in terms of for, for us as, as the church and as uh, Americans, uh, we don't do rest as a whole. We don't do rest very well. Uh, we, we just try to go, we go 90 miles an hour every single day, all the time. That's kind of how our society is set, set up. And so today, uh, I just want to answer a few questions about the Sabbath, and then uh, we'll probably close just a little bit different today. But the first question is this, well, what is a Sabbath day? What is a Sabbath day? A Sabbath day is just one day a week intended for rest. He says this, you got six days to work, one day to rest. Now, think about how blessed we are, okay, in that our, our culture says, uh, in, in general, I know many of you have got different jobs and oilfield jobs and things like that, and, and don't, don't get all pharisaical on me today because it, this is all in context, and Jesus, he understands. We're going to cover it all today, but uh, think about our society and the way we kind of work. Most of us work five days a week and get two days off. But what God says in the scripture, he says, no, you got six days to work and one day to rest. And so we're already, think about it, we're already kind of doubly blessed because in our general uh, society that we live in, it's most of us have a five-day work week. Most of us, some of us, it's a four-and-a-half-day work week. It's about four, uh, you know, you get off on uh, fr uh, Friday at noon. There, there's a speaker over here that keep, keeps jacking up, and I can't keep losing my concentration. i got to fix this before I go nuts. Which one is it? I'm going to turn it off. This one? How do you turn it off? One. No, it's this. There. Thank Jesus. Now I can, <laughs> now I can concentrate. Felt like a little squirrel behind me back there. I was wanting to shoot that thing. <clears throat> All right. So a Sabbath day is one day a week intended for rest. Uh, it is also, it is one day a week that you set aside your normal work activity to rest. Okay? And so here's, here's the thing. Now, when I, sometimes when I mention the word rest, and I'm one of these people, when I mention, okay, you're going to set aside a day to do nothing, I would go out of my mind. Right? Some of you, you just kind of, you got to be doing something all the time. And so, <coughs> excuse me, for me, uh, many times it is setting aside the normal work week or the things that I do uh, in my job or the normal things that I do that are associated or related to my job. I'm going to set those things aside for uh, one day and I, and I might do some other work. But they're not, this is not going to be the work that I normally do in the, in the other six, six days, okay, or the five days. And so I, I might, for me, on my day off, I might, um, I might work cows. Uh, I might build a little fence. Uh, I might go get, you know, the oil changed in the vehicle or something like that. Or I might do some things, but it's going to be outside of my normal six-day-a-week job, okay? And so, and, and we'll cover, of course, I, for me, I'm a pastor, and so I work on the Sabbath. Uh, and so how does that work, right? And so you take another day to, to rest. Uh, so that's what a Sabbath day is. It's just taking uh, a day aside from, to, to rest, aside from your normal work activity. Where does the Sabbath come from? He tells us this in Exodus, but basically in Genesis chapter 2, I think we've got that on the screen. In Genesis chapter 2, we know that uh, God created the heavens and the earth and everything in them that was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, and so he rested from all of his work. Now, let me just time out just for a second. If God rested from his work, can, can I, do I need to say anything else? Okay. If God rested from his work, uh, verse 3, and God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all of his work in creation, okay? So that's basically where it come from. God, God, he, he worked, okay? God spoke. God created. Some, some of us think we went through this on Easter. You think about when God created the heavens and the earth, uh, God put a lot of work into that, okay? He put a lot of thought into that. 
uh, sometimes we think of God sometimes as, man, he just spoke it and it just happened, and, and it did, but, but God did a, he did a lot of preparation. He thought, he thought through this process. I mean, he was, he was creative in it, you know, and, and what a creative God that he is, amen? And so he put a lot of work into his creation, and he put a lot of work into you. Uh, and then on the seventh day, man, he sat back and he enjoyed his work, and he rested, okay? And he gave us that example. What does taking a Sabbath day accomplish? Why, why, what's, what's the purpose of it, okay? Well, for number one, and this is probably the biggest one for all of us, uh, it keeps us... I remember last week we talked about idols? No, we talked about... Uh, two weeks ago we talked about idols. I'm trying my best not to take the Lord's name in vain today. <laughs> I did it Wednesday night on accident, but... Um, Two weeks ago, we talked about idols. It keeps us from worshiping our job. Okay? So God says, hey, you got six days to work, one day to rest. Remember to rest. Remember to rest, okay? And so what, for many of us, if our job is our idol, we don't ever rest. Okay, and you know this. Some of you are like, I, I didn't mean, I didn't really didn't want to come today, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> but it keeps us from worshiping our job. But here's something else that you probably never thought about. What does keeping, what does taking a Sabbath day accomplish? It also keeps us from worshiping our comfort. Here's for, for some of us, okay, the, the older generation, or for many of y'all, we're kind of characterized as really hard workers. You know, you, you work, hey, seven days a week, you know, whatever. Yeah, for most of us, we know Sunday is the Lord's day, but, you know, it's, it's, you get up at the crack of dawn and you don't quit until it, the sun goes down, okay? Anybody got a grandfather like that? You know, and I, I, I think uh, somebody was mentioning that the other said, man, I tried to get out of the house before daylight because I knew if my daddy was, was you know, if he found me at the house, he was going to put me to work. So I just tried to leave <laughs> to get out of work, you know. And so the older generation, we are pretty much all about work. And so we have trouble sometimes taking rest. But on the flip side of that, no, here's what the commandment says. You got six days to work and one day to rest. Not six days to rest and one day to work. You see what I mean? And so for many of us, we, we idolize our comfort. And God, God says, that ain't the way this should be working. No, you need to be working at least six days a week. You need to be doing something. You need to be engaged in something. You need to be doing something pers purposeful. You need to be doing something to provide. You need to be engaged. For many of you, uh, if you're a mom here today, uh, you, you don't have a nine-to-five job or whatever. You may not have a career, but you're a career mom. And you have responsibilities at home, right? And so, uh, I, man, I could go in so many different directions with this. I don't watch soap operas, but, like, anyway, I won't even go there, okay? But the thing is, is if comfort is your idol, then you're breaking the Sabbath, okay? Because God says you have six days to work, not six days to rest. And so for the younger generation for today, and probably a lot of you would agree with this, um, we, they probably don't work as much as what the older generation does. And so there's a balance there that has to take place. So it keeps us from worshiping our job, and it keeps us from worshiping our comfort. Then the uh, other one is it allows us to take our focus off of work so that God can work in us. Okay, now this one kind of help you make sense of this. For typically, um, Sunday is our Sabbath. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of, the, of my notes here, but for, for many of us, the Sabbath day is a day that we can set aside in our minds and in our bodies. We can set aside our daily work and just rest and really soak up the Lord. Whereas in the, in the six days that we have to work, yes, our minds are hopefully on the Lord. And God is still at the center of our, our, our jobs and our hearts and our lives. But we, we don't, we're, but our, our, we have responsibility. 
we, we, we have to fulfill this obligation, right? We have to go here and go there and do this and do that, okay? And so it, we're, even though our minds maybe are on God, um, whereas, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. we got all these other responsibilities. On, on the Sabbath day, we can say, I ain't worried about none of that, and I can just, be, I can just rest in the Lord. I, I can just stop, and I can just take a deep breath and say, thank you, Jesus, for life, and thank you, Jesus, for... For my job and and take a day to get our minds right okay is that not what Sunday is for a lot of us okay and so it helps us to do that it takes our focus off of work so that God can work in us all right it's like a reset button every week or for a lot of us it's kind of like a little booster shot in shorts every week some of us need one on Wednesday too amen why, what day should we observe the Sabbath? Well, in the, this culture, the Sabbath was uh, observed on Saturday. So from Friday night to Saturday night, you weren't allowed to do anything. Okay? Now I want to show you a little, uh, here in a minute in Exodus, I'm going to show you um, kind of how the Israelites did that and why the Lord set it up that way. But it was traditionally from, Saturday, from Friday night to Saturday night. So it was Saturday. When Jesus came and he died, what day did he get back up? Sunday, all right? And so it changed. And when, when Jesus got up from the grave and the cross changed everything, changed time, it changed everything. And so the Sabbath became, traditionally for Christians, Sunday now. Because Sunday was the day that Jesus got up. It was the day that we would celebrate his resurrection. It was the day that we would uh, just focus our minds and our attention on him on that particular day. And so Sunday became the day of, of, the, of the Sabbath, okay? But the principle behind the Sabbath is what's most important. The principle behind the Sabbath is what's most important. And it's the principle of rest. That you need to rest, okay? And so it doesn't matter, if, like, for, for, again, for pastors, we work on Sunday. Uh, we're engaged on Sunday. I was telling somebody this morning, like, normally my routine on every Sunday is I'm up at 5 o'clock every Sunday morning, and I am going over my message, I'm preparing, I'm praying, I'm thinking. Uh, hopefully I'm not changing a whole lot, but, but, but I'm, I'm just preparing for the day. And then I come, and, and we're here, we preach the message, and, and there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that most of the people don't ever see. And then afterwards, you know, you, you're trying to help people and spiritually in their lives and counsel and this and that and setting up appointments and things because you're all, you're all here on Sunday. And so you just, get, you just get, you know, bombarded with all that stuff on one day, which is great, but that's what pastors do. And that's why we need so much help and need, we have the elders and the lay pastors and all the team leaders that help in that. And so for pastors, Sunday is a work day. And so what I do is I take a Monday and I just, I try, not, I try not to come up here if I don't have to. Uh, I, I just, I try to do my own thing. I try to, try to be engaged in something, but nothing that is related to uh, church or my regular work week. Okay? And so that's kind of the deal. For, so it's the principle behind the Sabbath, not so much as it is the actual day that we observe it. Uh, and so why commit to taking a day of rest? Three things. One, God can do more in six days than you can do in seven. Does that sound kind of familiar? It kind of sounds like that old saying, God can do more with 90% than you can do with 100%. .100%. Oh, I'm not preaching on tithing today. I forgot about that. All right. <clears throat> so God can do more in six days than you can do in seven days. In other, in other words, if you'll take a day to rest you'll be a whole lot better off and a whole lot more productive in those six days if you take a day of rest. Y'all are going to sleep on me. I can, I can tell right now y'all don't like this message. <laughs> I'm just preaching the word. It's the fourth commandment. We got to cover it. I ain't going to skip over it. All right, we all? All right. So uh, Exodus chapter 16, this is kind of neat. It's a neat story. You can go back and read the rest of it for your own, but basically... Uh, God brought the Israelites out of Egypt. They were slaves there. They worked seven days a week, 24-7, okay? Slaves in Egypt. God, God rescues them from Egypt, 
and man, they begin complaining really, really fast. They're like, well, we're back in Egypt. We had this meat, you know, that we could cook and had bread and all this, and, and we ain't got nothing to eat out here, and this guy named Moses, he don't even know where he's going. So they're, they're, they're a bunch of babies and, and complainers. And so God is so merciful, though, and he loves his children. He likes to give good gifts to his children. He likes to give them blessings. Amen? And so what God says is, he says, okay, hey, I'm going to, Moses, tell the people, tomorrow they're going to have meat and they're going to have bread. All right? And so, man, he sends quail down. Oh, quail, oh, wrapped in bacon. You know, I'm like, well, they, they, the Israelites couldn't eat bacon at that time. Sucks to be them when they, <clears throat> back then. But he gave them quail and he gave them this bread that it, the scripture talk, it, it looked like frost on the ground. And they would go and pick it up, and it would be, it, it was like saltine crackers or something, but better than saltine. It was bread. It was ma manna. It was God-given food. And they would go, and they would pick it up. Okay, so let's pick up the story. God provided it for them this way. Exodus chapter 16, start verse 19. It says, Moses told them, do not keep any of the food until morning. Okay, so basically, they, God wanted them to know that I will provide for your needs on a daily basis. On a daily basis, okay? One day at a time. And so he would provide for them daily just what they needed, all right? And so he says, don't keep any till morning because tomorrow God's going to give you a fresh set of fresh plate, fresh food, Okay. Uh, and so verse 20 says, but some of them didn't listen, and they kept some until the next morning. But watch what happened. But by then, it was full of maggots, and it had a terrible smell. And Moses was angry with them. And so in other words, the Israelites, they kept something they weren't supposed to. Can, we'll just put it in terms like this. Now, I'm not, I don't think I'm stretching outside the terms here because it's a spiritual principle. But basically, the Israelites, they kept something that didn't belong to them. The Sabbath day belongs to God. The food, that, that particular day, God says, I'll provide for you daily. I'll provide for you tomorrow. Okay? Don't try to work this out on your own terms trust in me and the ones that trusted in themselves and tried to hoard for themselves and tried to get more and tried to get you know without doing it God's way it spoiled on them uh, so let's keep going verse 21 after the people gathered the food morning by morning each family according to its need and the Sun became hot the flakes that had they had not picked up they melted and disappeared on the sixth day they gathered twice as much. Why would they gather twice as much on the sixth day? Four quarts for each person instead of two. And then all the leaders of the community came and they asked Moses for an explanation. Why is there double the amount on the sixth day? He told them, this is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow will be a, a day of complete rest. A holy Sabbath set apart for the Lord. So bake or boil as much as you want today on the sixth day and then set aside for the seventh day for tomorrow. So they put some aside until morning just as Moses had commanded. And in the morning, the leftover food, where before it was spoiled, but now on the seventh day, the leftover food is wholesome and good. Huh, imagine that. Moses said, Eat this food today, for tomorrow is the Sabbath dedicated to the Lord, and there will be no food on the ground today. You may gather the food for six days, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath. There will be no food on the ground that particular day. And some of the people, they went out anyway on the seventh day, thinking they could get food, but they found no food. They found no satisfaction. They found no fulfillment I'm trying to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you in your own life they went out looking for fulfillment for purpose 
for sustenance and found nothing. Because God said, today's the day of rest. Today's the day of rest. All right? So, why commit to taking the Sabbath? Because God can do more in six days than you can do in seven days. Make sense? All right, here's number two. Chick-fil-A. Huh. Y'all know what Chick-fil-A... Now, I don't, I'm not a big chicken eater, okay? But I love some Chick-fil-A. I love some Chick-fil-A. Uh, y'all know what Chick-fil-A is. We need a Chick-fil-A in Carthage, y'all. Come on, some of y'all need to... Seriously. Anyway, I hope somebody's listening out there to get that job done. But <clears throat> I love Chick-fil-A. Now, Chick-fil-A is a fast food restaurant. They have great service. So does Waterburger. Waterburger, every now and then, they will give you a receipt that has, you can go out and fill out a little survey, and they'll give you a free hamburger just for filling out the receipt. They have great service at Waterburger. Uh, but here's what you need to know about Chick-fil-A, and, and many of y'all know this. On Sunday, they shut the door. They, they, they don't work on Sunday. In fact, the people who are the, the owners of, of Chick-fil-A, they tell their employees we don't work on Sunday because we want our employees to be resting and to be engaged in worship. They tell their employees that. This is why we do this, because we want you to be in church worshiping God. Okay? Now, why, now you would think, you would think, right, that Chick-fil-A would not be, their, their gross income or their gross earnings would be less than any other food chain comparable to them you would think because they got one day which Sunday is a big day so I mean most people when they get out of church they go on to get a hamburger or something right <laughs> are they going somewhere uh that's just kind of the way we just we got lazy right we got a crock pot <laughs> we got a roast in the crock pot right now <laughs> okay and so we had that communication but for, for for a lot of us we got to eat now I'm so I'm beating around the bush the average gross earnings of a fast food restaurant is about a mil for for a single restaurant is about a million dollars a year. Gross earnings, gross just gross sales. For one year for one restaurant, about a million dollars. Guess what it is for Chick-fil-A in 2014 or 2015? 3 million. 3 million. 3 times as much as a as any other restaurant that's open seven days a week. That gives me chill bumps, y'all. I mean, is that not a God thing? Which just goes to show you that if you'll do things God's way, He blesses it. He blesses it. Three million versus one million. Y'all can look that up on your own and figure that out, okay? Google it. It's, it's the truth. So, why commit to taking a day of rest? Take a lesson from Chick-fil-A. Here, one more. Why commit to taking a day of rest? Because it's a way to share your faith. When somebody says, uh, or they call you or something and say, hey, what are you doing on Sunday? Or your employee says, you know, hey, I need you to work on Sunday. Or what? Now, now I understand. A lot of us, we, we have to, like we wouldn't have a job if we didn't have to work. My wife, she's one of them. Uh, sometimes she has to be on call. Sometimes she has to step in, when, and it's on Sunday, okay? So we get that. But the principle is you've got to take some rest, and you've got to set aside your normal work hours for a little while. Maybe it needs to be on Monday or whatever, okay? But we, it's a way to share our faith, and we say, look, I don't do anything on Sunday, but go to church and relax. What do you do that for? <laughs> well, number one, because... God wants us to. And I try my best to do things his way because I've made him the Lord of my life. And I want to follow him and do things his way. Because And I've just kind of figured it out that, man, when I do things God's way, he just blesses them. And so it's a way to share our faith. And we say we go to church on Sunday. Because on Sunday, or on the seventh day, God rested when he created the world. And so who am I to think that I don't need rest if God rested? <laughs> okay? So it's a way to share our faith. Now, what did Jesus do? Jesus observed the Sabbath. He did. But he also was smart. And he had common sense. And he tells us that 
the Sabbath was created for man. Man was not created for Sabbath. So many times, I won't go through the scripture, but you can look at Matthew chapter 12 and Luke chapter 13. You'll see where the Pharisees get mad at Jesus because he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. Or he, they found his disciples, they were walking through a grain field and they were picking some grain and eating it. And they go, oh my gosh, they're, they're working on the Sabbath day. And they got all in a tizzy because they thought they were harvesting the fields. And they, he says, guys, it's not about that. It's, it's, he, it's the principle. And he, and he tells them, he says, look, he, any of you, if you go home, are you not going to take your donkey to go get water? Duh. If your ox is in the ditch and he needs to get out, you're not going to leave him there for 24 hours. You're going to go get him out. Use common sense, okay? And so that's why you see the little bit of different terminology in the Ten Commandments where uh, for many of us it says, do not do this, do not do this, you have to do this, you must do this. But in the Sabbath it says, just remember to observe the Sabbath and just remember to rest, okay? Don't get so caught up and don't get so legalistic that you don't rest. So Jesus... He often rested. He often withdrew from the crowd. In fact, the terminology that you see a lot of times in the scripture is the disciples go, he was just here. I, uh, I'll get back to you. Anybody seen Jesus? <laughs> and he's off in the woods somewhere praying and getting away going, Lord, why did you do this to me? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's like for his disciples. You know I mean? He dealt with the 12 disciples all the time. He needed some rest. Also, he dealt with people possessed by demons all the time. <laughs> you don't think somebody's like, okay, I need to step away for a little while. Because he fought Satan constantly. And he needed to get away and be by himself. And he needed to rest. He needed to be, needed to be fed by God. Okay? So Jesus, he did this too. Now, as I said, I'm going to close a little bit different today. Uh, and today was pretty much a teaching message, and I hope the Holy Spirit has, um, has spoken to you today. And I hope you'll commit to taking a day of rest. I hope you'll fit that into your life, <laughs> your important life, okay? I hope you'll do that. I hope you'll experience the benefits that come from just taking a day to set aside and to just relax, okay? This is the, fa this is the Father that, that we have. Hey, hey, relax. See, slaves, they work 24-7. Only the elite, the wealthy, and royalty get time off. God says, you're not slaves anymore. I don't, I'm not going to treat you like slaves, okay? I want you to take some rest. So I've really struggled with this, and I want to share this with you guys, and this has kind of been a, a long time coming. But uh, the Lord laid on my heart, about last, well, really fall about two years ago. So it's taken me a little while, about a year and a half ago. And with the Lord just works it out and he's faithful and, and his timing is always perfect. <clears throat> but if you'll remember, Todd Mitchell was here not too long ago and he stayed for lunch and our elders and their wives, we had a lunch meeting. Or I said we just, not a, really a meeting, it we had a lunch over at the student center, and we were just sitting around enjoying ourselves and having conversation. And all of a sudden, uh, Todd says, uh, he says, when's the last time you took a vacation? And I said, well, uh, I, I don't know. I said, I've taken some Sundays off, you know, but I said, usually I'm preaching somewhere else or, you know, I mean, we went on that trip to Vegas, and it was fun and all, but, you know, we were passing out Bibles and all that. I mean, it was, you know, we were kind of, you know, talking, it was work, you know, but I mean, it was also fun too. So I guess you could consider that a vacation. And he goes, no, he says, when have you really taken some time off? And I went, I don't know, because I'm, I'm, I'm a hard worker, right? I don't want anybody to call me lazy, like, I, you know, who needs a vacation, you know? <clears throat> and he goes, do you need one? And I said, I, I, I think I'm all right. And then he asked me something that I will never forget. He goes, if I ask your wife the same question, what would she say? And I broke down. Like, I, I couldn't control myself. I, I just, I put my head down, and I began 
uncontrollably crying. And I knew at that moment that, that there is something that the Lord was telling me to do that I haven't done because he stirred inside of me something that I couldn't control. And so from that point on, uh, we began having conversations about me taking some time off. And as a, a I've actually, you know, as part of the American Fellowship of Cowboy Churches and talk with a lot of pastors and things, one of the things that we encourage them to do to prevent burnout is to take some time off or to take a sabbatical. We, we, we tell our pastors, you got to take one day a week, put the phone down. You got to take one day a week, take that Sabbath and take step away, okay? You got to do that to prevent yourself from burning out. But about every seven to ten years, really seven, at least seven, uh, you've got to take about four to six weeks and just unplug and to prevent yourself from burning out. And so we, we encourage that in our pastors. And I thought myself, how, how can I encourage that in so many other people and not be willing to do it myself? And so our elders have encouraged me to do this. And so I, I just want you guys to know we've been this, we've done this through leadership. But this July, the, from the last Sunday in June and five Sundays in July, I'm going to take a sabbatical. And I'm going to take some time away. <clears throat> I'm just going to unplug, and I, I'm, I'm not going to preach, I'm not going to teach, I, I'm just going to be fed, I'm going to visit some other churches, but I want you to know this from my mouth, I'm not going anywhere, okay? <clears throat> so I want to honor my family in that way. And I want to honor you in that way because I want to come back on fire. Amen? And I want to come back to give you with a, with, a, with a fresh pastor. Okay? That's what I want to give you when I come back. And so if you'll allow me to, for those for the whole month of July, it, it was a hard decision for me because I'm not even going to go on the Montana mission trip. And I had to communicate that to the Indian fellas that were down here. Uh, and it was a hard thing for me to do. And Eli loves going to Montana. And, but I had to honor what the Lord was telling me to do more than anything else. And I know he's going to bless that. Okay? And so that's where I'm at on that. And here's what I need you to know. When those six weeks that I'm going to be gone, everything's going to continue as normal. In those six weeks, we're going to bring in the heavy hitters. All right? Kyle Keelan's coming back. All right? Kyle uh, Bruiser, Kyle Lee's coming back. All right? Uh, our brother Charles Tools coming back, okay? And so you guys be ready. John Henry's going to preach some. You guys be ready to be fed, even though I'm not here, to be fed by the Word of God, all right? Now, and so here's what I need you all to understand. This church is not built on Matt Comer. So if, if I'm, hey, if, if y'all truly, if this is a test for Stillwaters. This is a test for Stillwaters. Is this church built around one man's preaching? Or is this God's church? Is this God's church? All right? And so, guys, I'm telling y'all, this summer is going to be incredible. And God is going to continue to speak to you and to move this church forward. All right? I know that without a shadow of a doubt. Because it's not built on me and my preaching. All right? And so that's what I want y'all to know, and I want to encourage you guys just to continue on like we've always been doing, all right? Thank you for letting me be your pastor, all right? We're going to finish the six, next six commandments, and then when the last one's done, I'm going to be ready to take a little break. I want you know, guys to know I love you. Today we're going to close. I, I tell you what, I'm just going to close in prayer, and um, we're going to be over here like normal in the Double S Ranch Room. If you need Jesus Christ in your life today, we'd love nothing more than to share him with you. Because that's the, the only name that matters, all right? But uh, if you need prayer or anything, we're going to be here for you. But we're just going to close this, this evening, this morning, and uh, we're going to thank God for all that he's done. Amen?
Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for this church. And Lord, thank you so much for giving us in your Ten Commandments the permission to rest and relax. Uh, Father, I just pray you'll instill this principle, Lord, in our lives and that uh, we commit to that, Lord, just to taking a break so that we can be better for you. Father, we love you today, and I pray for anybody that just needs to come to you today, maybe needs to receive you as Lord and Savior. Father, I pray for those that maybe need to uh, see your commandments, Lord, as not just a bunch of rules and regulations, but a, a set of principles, Lord, that are for our protection, that you're, they're there because you love us, and you don't want to see us hurt. That's the good Father that you are. And so, Lord, I pray that people will see that today, and Lord, I pray you continue to move in people's lives and to change us from the inside out and that we can impact your kingdom. Uh, and Lord, just give it all the glory to you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.